Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We welcome you all. We welcome you all the youths from different northeastern states. Thank you so much for joining in Youth Breakthrough Sunday Live Youth Service. Hallelujah. As you know, uh, our timing was 8, but still it's 8.30, but just, you know, let's, let's, let's leave about that because of some network problem it was coming. But, you know, in youth service, what we do is like uh, in every youth service, in every youth talk, we used to, you know, introduce new songs to you. We used to introduce to you new songs which contains a lot of revelations. Hallelujah. Tonight, we have some different plans for you. Tonight, we have more better plans for you, more glorious plans for you. I hope you will love this. Uh, you know, we used to play some songs that youths were singing and they applauded in YouTube and we took those songs, those Revelation songs and we tried to play it to you. But tonight we have a youth, uh, a, a member of Youth Breakthrough. His name is Brother Samuel. He has joined us all the way from, you know, nearby but still he has, he has joined us tonight for the very first time. He'll be coming here on this stage. So I hope you will welcome him. I hope you will, you know, love his worship. Hallelujah. So as we are going into this youth service, let us all close our eyes and let us go into worship, please. Hallelujah. Friends, thank you, King. Experience Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. When you live with Jesus, He never allow any lackness in your life. Hallelujah. Experience Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. When you live with Jesus. Uh, hello, Sabi Go. So, today, Sunday night youth service, I am Sabi Go. Very welcome. We are from YBW team. So, now, who is new, who is coming, 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 who is so actually, my first time in worship. So, Abhi, so come to, uh, uh, let's come to uh, worship to God. So, be Agban Kerry Abna.
Sukriya, Sukriya. Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. When you live with Jesus, जब आप यीशु का पालन करके उसके साथ जिएगा आप, He never allow any lackness in your life. वो कोई भी कमी गति आपकी जिंदगी में आने नहीं देगा. Experience Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. When you live with Jesus, जब आप यीशु का पालन करके उसके साथ जिएगा आप, He never allow any lackness in your life. वो कोई भी Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, praise the Lord! Glory to Jesus, glory to my King Jesus! Hallelujah! Once again, brothers and sisters, I welcome you to this wonderful service, wonderful youth service. And right now, you heard uh, Brother Samuel. He was he was the one who was worshiping. He's a part of our youth breakthrough. And I would like to thank all the people who have joined. And if there is somebody who haven't shared the message yet, you can share the message. You can share the message. There might be some people who are who might be in need of this message, who might be in need of these revelations in their lives. Hallelujah! So, without wasting time, we are going to into, going into the Word of God. Let us open. You know, let, let us turn our attention to Second Corinthians five twenty. Second Corinthians five twenty. Hallelujah. Manta kibra azoko to koradigra hazata. Leko boho zaka ante keredigra azoto. We are we are going in Second Corinthians five twenty. Second Corinthians five twenty. Hallelujah. Let us read this verse together. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did besiege you by us. We pray you in Christ instead. Be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. So before we go into the message, let us close our eyes and let us pray for this service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, the Spirit of the Living God. We praise you, Lord. We glorify your name here tonight, Jesus. Lord, yes, Lord, bring the people that you want. To save Jesus, Lord, connect this network to those people right now who might be in need, Lord Jesus, who might be in need of this message right now, Father. Lord, open the hearts of brothers and sisters, Lord, that are listening behind the screens, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, may you take this word of God because it is your message, it is your word of God, Lord. It is your truth. May it go. Deeper in their spirits tonight, Jesus. Lord, as they leave from this service, may they become what you want them to be, Lord Jesus. Lord, if somebody is watching us for the first time, Lord Jesus, may you touch them with your power tonight. May you touch them with your presence tonight, Lord Jesus. If they have come with grief, let them go with joy tonight, Jesus. If they come, if they have come with pain and sorrows, may they go with joy. And gladness, Father. 
if they have come with sicknesses, may they go from here being healed tonight, Jesus, in your mighty name, Jesus. Father, that is what we pray, Lord Jesus. As a team, that is what we pray tonight, Father. Those people who are here tonight, Jesus, we pray that your lost souls might be saved, Jesus. That is what our prayer is, Jesus. May you use this to reach the lost souls, Lord. May you use this to reach those who are sick and needy, Lord Jesus. That is what our prayer is, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May you open the word of God tonight, Jesus. As we wait for your presence, as we wait for your power, Lord Jesus. May you open the word of God because without you, Holy Spirit, we cannot understand. It is your word. It is your word, Lord. You have written this. It is under your inspiration. Without you, we cannot understand the word of God. Father, open our spiritual eyes. Open our minds and our hearts to receive the truth that is straight from you, Jesus. Lord, anoint me and my voice, Lord Jesus, so that those people who might be listening, they might receive life and spirit, Father, tonight. Yes, Lord, under your authority, I pray, Father. May they receive life and truth tonight, life and spirit tonight. Yes, Lord, we surrender the rest of the service unto your mighty hands. In Jesus, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Okay, tonight, as I, you know, tonight the topic is Zoe, the God kind life part two. Hallelujah. Man Takahazotoko. Tonight, I'm telling you that it's going to be so much glorious. God is going to speak to you tonight. Hallelujah. It's going to speak to you. It's going to speak to your spirit. It's going to speak to you personally tonight. Hallelujah. This, is, uh, this series is a continuation of uh, what Brother Tony has started, New Creation. The new creation he started uh, maybe two weeks earlier, and then the second, and then uh, I was there, I preached the God Kind Life Zoe. It was the part one. But we didn't thought like we will be doing a series of this, but uh, we saw that some people were asking also for a series. So we planned that, okay, let us do a series on this. So tonight, that is a continuation of new creation and Zoe, the God kind of life part one. This is the Zoe, the God kind of life part two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So without wasting time, let us go into the, uh, go, go into the word of God. In 2 Corinthians 5.20 it says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did besiege you by us, we pray you in Christ instead, be a reconciled to God. What is this verse saying? Hallelujah. We discussed earlier about so many stuff. We discussed about, you know, being born again. We discussed that what we are teaching tonight, what we are teaching about the new creation, about a different kind of life, about the God kind of life, you cannot understand until and unless you are born again. We told you that, you know, you have to be born of the water, born of the Spirit, to, you know, to enter into the kingdom of God, to explore the kingdom of God. We were discussing these old things in the previous sections. We discussed a lot of stuff. We discussed about the seed of Abraham, how you are the seed of Abraham. And tonight, God wants to talk to us through these verses too. The Bible is saying like this, Now then we are ambassadors. For whom? For Christ. What does ambassador mean? Let me just start with this. Uh, Bible in the New Testament says that Jesus has made us his ambassadors. Hallelujah. When you go to the, uh, when you go, you know, when you understand what is the work of the ambassadors, you will find that every country has its ambassadors. Hallelujah. ambassador For example, there is an ambassador for, uh, for India. There is an ambassador for Pakistan. There is an ambassador for China. There is an ambassador for US. What is an ambassador? What is an ambassador? Let us understand this. You know, uh, through the dictionary, we let us understand what is the meaning of ambassador. So as to understand what God is trying to tell us through this verse. When He's saying that we are the ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. He, we are the ambassadors of Christ. But until and unless you don't understand what an ambassador does, who is an ambassador you won't understand? Hallelujah. So ambassadors, uh, let me explain it to you in the most uh, simple statement. Ambassador in simple words means representative. Hallelujah. You've heard about like there is an ambassador from India who is staying at US. What does that ambassador is doing? Ambassador is doing, he's representing India in US. 
Hallelujah. The ambassador of U.S., you, you, will, you will be hearing that the, um, there is an ambassador of U.S. in China. What is that ambassador doing? The ambassador of U.S. is representing U.S. in China. Hallelujah. The ambassador of India is representing, is representing India in U.S. That's the same case with us. Hallelujah. That's the same case with us. You know, we are, as we are discussing, we are, we have the God kind of life. Hallelujah. We have the God kind of life. As we were discussing in the last, you know, last part, we were saying that we are inside heaven. We are in the heavenly places seated with Christ. Hallelujah. And we say the kingdom of God is within us. We talked about this. You know, if you have missed this, you got to go to the part one of this. If you're not understanding what we're saying, you got to go in the part one of this. You got to go in new creation all the way back. Okay, you got to go there and you got to see the series, the whole series of this. We, we, discussed, we discussed about this, that how that heaven is in us and we are inside heaven. Hallelujah. We are filled with heaven inside of us and we are inside heaven. We have a layer of protection. We have a layer of glory. Hallelujah. No sickness can touch us. No corona can touch us. I know the pandemic is going and people might be, you know, crazy. They might be, you know, fear in fear. But we are different. Hallelujah. We are God kind, hallelujah. In simple words, if I would say we are God kind, we don't fear all those stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are here right now, Father. I bless your name, Jesus. I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. Yes, those who are watching me, if you have the gift of tongues, you can pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Father, as we speak this revelation, may you take this revelation and impart in their spirit tonight jesus may their life be never be the same tonight from tonight jesus thank you lord jesus oh jesus oh jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May you open this word according to thy grace, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we were discussing that we are the ambassadors of, for Christ. Hallelujah. We are a representative for Christ. As we say that, you know, India has an ambassador and India's ambassador in U.S. represents India in U.S. We are, we belong to heaven and we are the ambassadors for Christ, hallelujah. We represent heaven in earth, hallelujah. Are you understanding? We represent, we are the ambassadors for Christ. God has given us something. God has given us a duty. God has given, God has you know, put something in us so that we might be ambassadors for whom? For Christ. We have a purpose here on earth. You have a purpose on earth. Those who are watching, you have a personal you know, purpose on earth, hallelujah. God wants to do something from your life. Hallelujah. God wants you to represent Him. As you are born again tonight, hallelujah. We're so glad that we are born again. Hallelujah. As you are born again, as you're watching me tonight, God wants you to be His ambassador. God wants you to be somebody who represents Him. We'll be discussing about how to represent Him. We have discussed a lot about, you know, the seed of Abraham. We have discussed about the God kind of life in the first section. But this section is different. This section is much more glorious. This section is much more deeper. Hallelujah. 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 This section will equip you. Will equip, equip you so that you can represent Christ. Hallelujah. So that the purpose that Christ has for you on this earth might be fulfilled hallelujah you gotta know you gotta have knowledge hallelujah you gotta have the knowledge of the word of god what the word of god says about you you gotta have that word of god says that you are the ambassadors for christ you are a representative for christ you are a representative for heaven you're a representative representative for that anointed one hallelujah say i am anointed hallelujah i am anointed those who are watching me right now you can write you can write that i am anointed you can write in the comment section that i am anointed as i told earlier you write it you write it when you write you're confessing 
Hallelujah. You are anointed. You are a representative. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are representing Jesus who is in heaven right there. He's your papa. He's saying, okay, my son, my daughter, you are my ambassadors right now. Though I am in heaven on the right hand of God right now sitting with my father, but I have given you authority. I have given you some purpose. You are an ambassador for Christ. Hallelujah. Am I clear? Hallelujah. Can you tell me, brother? Yeah. Hallelujah. Pate Papi is saying that, Hallelujah, I am anointed with fire. Saima Debarma is saying, I am anointed. Yo is saying, I am anointed. Mayor Debarma is saying, I am anointed. Dam Sinkonia is saying, I am anointed. Techu Anatara is telling that, I am anointed. God, you are my ambassador. I say, I am anointed. Lihu Anga said, I am anointed. Veronica is saying, I am anointed. Veronica and everybody is saying, I am anointed. I. Amen. Amen. I. We are anointed. Hallelujah. We are anointed for a purpose. Hallelujah. This is very interesting. What I'm teaching right now is, you know, uh, we started with <laughs> we started with new creation. Brother Tonya took the portion from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. And what we are discussing right here is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. Just three verses ahead. Hallelujah. We just left at 17. Brother Tonya left at 17. He said, Therefore, whosoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. This phone. It's not like we've sent it and you know repairman and came no this phone became a new phone a brand new phone hallelujah if we send the hallelujah if we send the wrong phone if we send a damaged phone god gave us a you know good phone and brand new phone we give our lives to jesus he gave he gives us a new life to us and that life is a god kind life hallelujah we're going to go deeper this is just the starting this is just the starting we're just trying to you know you know tell you some of the verses so that you can you know understand the foundations of these teachings hallelujah so verse 20 says, we are the ambassadors for Christ. As though God did besiege you by us. Besiege you by us. Mm -mm -mm. We pray you in Christ instead, be a reconciled to God. Apostle Paul here is saying to the Corinthian church, is saying like, as God, just as God, I'm praying. Apostle Paul is saying, just as God would pray for you, I'm praying for you, Corinthian church. Hallelujah. We, what, he, what he's praying, he's saying, we pray that in Christ instead, you be reconciled to God. You be reconciled to God. You know, when we see the Greek terminology of reconciled used here is kataloso. Kataloso, you be reconciled with God. You know, this translation is in English, but you know, English is kind of limited. We'll talk about that also, why it's limited. Because uh, we know that, you know, the love, the word love, English is very limited. It just says love. But when you see the Greek, uh, Greek or the Greek, you know, writings, you will see that there are four kinds of love. Hallelujah. There are four kinds of love. There's eros, there's philia, there's torch, there is agape. But the, the, but the Bible, but the English Bible says only love. It's limited. The language is limited. So it's written reconciliation. We know that reconciliation means, you know, merging together. Yes, we know that. He says reconciling, you know, you'll you be reconciled to God. That is what his prayer is. Hallelujah. But you know, reconcile, when you see the Greek terminology, it also means to exchange. Hallelujah. It also means to exchange, to change. Hallelujah. It says to reconcile, to exchange. Are you understanding? So Apostle Paul is saying, Corinthian church is saying, you know, as Christ would pray for you, as Christ, Christ would say to you, Corinthian church, I am telling you, tonight you got to exchange your life with God. Tonight, those who are watching, you got to exchange your life with God. you got to exchange your normal human life with the life of God. Hallelujah. Tonight, God is telling you to take your life, take your, maybe it's weak life, or maybe it's, you know, a life that is, you feel like, oh, there is a lot of problems. Tonight, God is telling you, reconcile that to God tonight. Tonight, God is saying, take up your life and, you know, unite it with God. Tonight, God is saying, take up your life and exchange it for God's life. Hallelujah. Am I preaching to somebody tonight in the congregation? Hallelujah. Am I preaching? Am, are you getting in your spirit that God wants you to exchange your life? Exchange your, you say, oh, my life is wrecked. My life, you know, I don't, you know, my life is not good. God is telling you tonight. If somebody is there is watching right now, you're feeling that, oh, you don't have hope. If there is somebody who's watching for the first time and you're thinking, and you're thinking that, oh, my life, what should, do, what should I do with this life? If you're watching me and you know, I want to tell you my brother, God, Jesus, my Lord Jesus is calling you tonight. He's saying, you know what, you bring your life, you say it's a record life, bring that life, 
I'm going to give you a brand new life and that life is much more glorious. That life is beyond your understanding. That life is beyond your knowledge. That life is beyond your imagination. And that life is Zoe, the God kind of life. Hallelujah. You know, that's what our topic is. Zoe, God kind of life. Hallelujah. Jesus gave His life in exchange of our life. He gave His, his life. He gave His life so that He could give his life to us hallelujah praise god are you understanding what god wanted to do are you understanding what happened at the cross he does he just didn't die on the cross there was a big thing that happened on the cross there was something in the spiritual realm the bible says before the foundation of the world jesus was crucified hallelujah before the foundation of the world before you were formed before i was formed jesus died for us hallelujah jesus died for us why he wanted to exchange our life. He wanted to exchange our infirmities. He wanted to exchange our weaknesses with His strength, with His glory, with His life, with His Zoe. Hallelujah. That is, that is His plan. That is the plan of God the Father. That's why Apostle Paul is saying, as God would say to you, Corinthians, I am telling you, tonight you got to stop crying. Tonight you got to, you know, you, know, you, you got to stop pitying yourself. Self-pity. Tonight you got to stop being self-pity. Tonight, you got to stop, you know, saying negative words to your own life. You got to stop because God is telling you, I have come. Jesus is telling you, I, w I was laid on that cross so that I could exchange, so that I could give, so that I could breathe my life upon you, so that I could breathe the Zoe, the life of God inside of you. Hallelujah. 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 Let us read this, you know, uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 onwards, so that we might get some context. I'm reading uh, 20, but we'll just read from 17 onwards. So, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. This is, you know, we read in uh, the new creation, new creation um, sermon. And let us go ahead. It says, verse 18, And all things are of God. Who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh hallelujah. I want to preach from this area also tonight. So I want to just want to you know highlight this portion tonight. Verse is saying, All things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God has reconciled us, God has exchanged. Now God has given us that God kind of life through Jesus Christ. Tonight, if there is somebody who's watching and you know, you think like, oh, Jesus is not worth it. I'm telling you, he's worth it. He's worth it. Jesus is 100% more than anything is worth it. You don't have to, you should not leave Jesus from your life. Hallelujah. God is saying, I exchanged my life. He's saying, I gave you my life. He gave you a glorious, victorious life. Because of whom? Jesus. If there is no Jesus, you don't have that God kind of life. I'm telling you, Jesus is the main person. If He didn't die for us, if He didn't, if He wasn't there, if He wasn't there on the cross, you know, suffering for you and me, we couldn't have gotten this God kind of life. Hallelujah. He says, God had reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. God had given us a God kind of life by Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ and because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. He is, He is, you know, from everlasting to everlasting. He is everything. The Bible says like that He is all in all. He's all, He's everything and He is in all. He is the one. Hallelujah. He is the one. Jesus is the one. Without Jesus, we don't have the God kind of life. Without Jesus, we don't have the new life. Hallelujah. We love Him so much. We honor Him. Hallelujah. And you know, you cannot know Jesus without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the person of the Holy Spirit who reveals you the face of Jesus. You will try to search for Jesus, but nobody can show you Jesus until and unless the Holy Spirit comes. Until and unless the Holy Spirit comes and He reveals you the face of Jesus. That's why we love the Holy Spirit so much. That's why we honor the Holy Spirit so much. If it was not for the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have known Jesus. If, we, if it was not for the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't be here preaching you the gospel. If the Holy Spirit wasn't there, 
we wouldn't have been, you know, gotten in, gotten the God kind of life. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the main person. The Holy Spirit is the main person. Without them, our life is nothing. And the further verse says, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. I, I, you know, this is so beautiful when you read this. Uh, the verses is saying, Jesus not only reconciled his life and given to us, he just, you know, he died for us and he gave us a God kind of life. That is not, yeah, he did that, but the verse does not stop there. The verse says, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God exchanged his life for ours. God gave us his life to us because of Jesus Christ and God also when he gave you and me the God kind of life a life where there is no sickness a life you know where there is peace beyond understanding a life which is filled with love with beyond knowledge hallelujah he gave us the ministry of reconciliation too he had also given us the ministry of reconciliation he given he gave us a God kind of life and he told us to give this God kind of life to other person too Hallelujah. He wants, you know, he wants to use you. Hallelujah. He wants to use you so that you can be a blessing to others. So that you can, I love this. How Jesus did, you can do. You need to do. This is your calling. Do you know that? This is what the God kind of life is. What Jesus did for you, you need to do it for others. Because Jesus now lives in you. Hallelujah. Are you seeing that? Jesus now lives in you. He gave you the God kind of life. Hallelujah. So that you can release, so that you can serve through this God kind of life to others. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation. He has given you the ministry of exchange. Hallelujah. Exchange so that people who are, you know, who are, you know, let, let us go in, let us go in uh, uh, Isaiah 61, 3 and 4. I saw this in comments, uh, Muksa sister. I know you're watching us. Thank you so much for always, you know, supporting us. So Muksa's sister, last time when we were there, she was asking that, oh, Brother Tubin, when, while you were preaching, uh, you know, I could relate something and I, there was some kind of, uh, you know, I, I wanted to understand what Isaiah 61, 3 and 4 was saying. And, you know, the Holy Spirit told me about this. The Holy Spirit told me to preach about this, but because, you know, last time I didn't have time to preach about this, so I didn't go there. So, but tonight, uh, I want to just take it forward. Isaiah 61, 3 and 4. Okay, Isaiah chapter 61. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Isaiah chapter 61, 3 and 4. This is lovely. This is lovely. Let us read together. One, two, three, and go. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for asses, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. This is what God is telling you. When he says that, you know, God did this in your life. And see, God would, you, Jesus, when he died for you, he did this in your life. The, Bible, the verse 3 says, he gave you beauty for asses. What, you know, asses kya pata hai? Raak hota hai, raak. Jo, jo jal gaya hai, the thing which is destroyed. You know, the, the, the raak jo hota hai, mitti asses. For example, you burnt a, uh, burnt a wood and wo pura jal ke ho gaya. Uska pura purpose ho gaya. Jo ke liye use karna tha, pura ho gaya. You took the heat off out of that, uh, out of that, you know, that uh, log, and now it's burned already, and now it became like ashes. So the verse Isaiah 61:3 is saying that God, Jesus, is prophesying that God gave us beauty for ashes. Hallelujah! I just think there's a beauty of this. He gave us beauty for asses. Though we were like asses, though we were like, you know, Jo used though gaya hai, though we were like, we didn't have purpose. As, you know, as is completely a desole. The verse is saying, He gave beauty for asses. The verse is saying, The oil of joy for mourning. Those who are mourning, those who are raha hai, those who are in sorrow and pain, God, the verse is saying, He gave joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. This is the God kind of life. When God did this, I was telling that reconciliation, Jesus reconciled. Jesus exchanged his life with your life. The life of Jesus is beautiful. So the verse is saying, He gave you beauty. He gave you beauty for your asses. Aapka rakh but He gave you beauty. He gave you, you know, sundar diya. Hallelujah. Though your life, maybe your life was like mourning, He gave you the oil of joy. 
Though, though you, you had the spirit of heaviness, you were like so heavy, I feel so heavy. The God said, I give you the garments of praise. Hallelujah. Before you were like, you so, felt so like heaviness. You were there, you were, you were like so desperate. You were depressed. But God gave you this garment of praise. This is the God kind of life. Hallelujah. He exchanged Jesus, died on that cross. He exchanged his life for you. That is the meaning of reconciliation. That is the meaning of exchange. That is the meaning. That is the, you know, you know if, you are, if you would understand the core of this message, he exchanged his life for you. He gave you the Zoe. He gave you God kind of life. When he died on the cross, he gave you Zoe. He gave you his life. His life is this. The oil of joy. And a beautiful asses, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of happiness. For what purpose? That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. Brother, are they understanding the message? Are they following? Are you following? Yeah. If they're understanding the message. Okay, so here the verse uh, ahead is saying the trees of right. He called. So why? The, what, the, what was the purpose that you know he exchanged this so that we might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. Tonight, uh, today, you know, uh, in the morning section, our senior pastor was preaching that you will become a tree planted by the riverside that shall grow in its due season, that shall produce fruit in its due season, and whose leaves shall not wither away. Trees of righteousness. Hallelujah. God wants you to have that. We're going to discuss what is righteousness, what is the trees of righteousness, because this is a very important topic. If you will read, you know, if you will, uh, if you will read Matthew 6.33, the Bible says like this, you know, the, uh, God says, Jesus says like this, that seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness first. Then everything else shall be added unto you. So righteousness is very important. God, you know, exchanged us all these lives unto you. God gave you, you know, joy. God gave you peace. God gave you love beyond your comprehension so that to love others God took away all your sorrows and pains God you know anointed you with the oil of gladness God gave you the spirit of praise the garment of praise the spirit of faith he gave you why so that you might become the trees of righteousness so that you might become a tree that is fruitful hallelujah we studied in today's morning session Psalms 1-3 a tree planted by the riverside. That is what God wants you to be. He wants you to be fruitful. Hallelujah. When He gave you that God kind of life, He wants you to be powerful. He wants you to be fruitful. No matter what the seasons are telling, no matter what is the situation, He wants you to grow like a plant that is planted on the riverside with complete, you know, you know, complete source coming from that water. Hallelujah. That our source is Jesus. Our source is the Word of God. Hallelujah. And the and the beautiful thing, you know, when you go ahead in verse 4, it says, they, should, they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolation. They shall build the old ways. If there is something that is wasted in your life, in your old life, God is telling you tonight that you shall build your old life. That you shall build your old life. Maybe you, maybe you were doing some business. Maybe you were trying some education. You failed. But tonight, when you're born again, tonight as you're receiving this, you know, you are under my influ influence of my voice, you shall build your waist. Hallelujah. Your old waist you shall be building. Hallelujah. They shall raise up the former desolation. Those who were desolate before. The Bible is saying they shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. They shall, you know, recover. They shall recover everything. Hallelujah. When you're born again, when you, you know, get this, you know, Zoe, when you get this new kind of life, you, the born again is like a, you know, just like this. You just know that, yeah, I'm born again. You just have that faith. But as we know that the Bible, the, you know, this, this transformation of your souls takes some time. It takes some time, you know, uh, the Bible says in Romans 12, too, it says that, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It takes some time to renew. It takes some time to, you know, suddenly get that spirit of faith. So some people might be saying like, oh, these people are preaching about God's kind of life. We don't have that level of faith. Yeah, you will have. Tonight as you're watching, I believe that the spirit of faith is going to touch you. Hallelujah. So God wants, you know, God is telling that you shall build the old ways. When you're born again, maybe something, you know, you left behind. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was your family relationship. Maybe it was your education that you left behind. That you, you thought that you couldn't do. But once you're born again, 
Hallelujah. Once you're born again, once the life of God is in you, you are going to go back. You're going to build those waste. You're going to build it up. Hallelujah. God is going to exchange your sorrow for His gladness. God is going to give in your hatred, God is going to give you love. Hallelujah. God is going to exchange tonight. Hallelujah. I believe that God is exchanging tonight many lives. He's exchanging so many people who are watching me tonight. You are exchanging. God is exchanging your life with Him. God is giving you His life and you are giving Him your life tonight. Hallelujah. I believe many exchanges are taking place tonight. You are saying, God, I exchanged my life. I exchanged this life with you, Lord. I give you my life tonight. I see many youths right now. They're kneeling down and they're saying, they're crying and they're saying, Lord, I cannot go on. But Lord, I'm exchanging my life with you tonight. I'm giving you my life. And I want your life in return. God is saying to you tonight, He's going to give you His life. Tonight, your life is going to change. My sister who is watching that, God is telling you tonight, He's exchanging your life with Him. He's giving you the God kind of life tonight. Hallelujah. So uh, we'll go back to our main topic that's, that is 2 Corinthians 5. We were seeing in 18 and 19, we were seeing that we have given, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. God, now, this is what I was trying to show you, that this, this is what Jesus did, right? In Isaiah 61, 3 and 4. So God says, He has given us the ministry of reconciliation too. As Jesus reconciled His life with us, as Jesus gave us the God kind of life, Jesus wants us to also give this life to others. Are you understanding? He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 to 18 is saying He gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that you might go and you know, so that you can exchange the people who are weary, who are weak, who, who don't have hope, so that you can speak to them. Hallelujah. So that you can speak to them and you can, you know, you know, you can calm them down so that you can, you know, impart to them the life and the spirit of Jesus. So that you can tell them the gospel, about the eternal gospel, so that exchange might take place in their life too. A reconciliation may take place in their life too. The Bible says like this, it's very amazing to know Verse 19, it says, to know that God was in Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He's saying, God was in Christ. God the Father was in Christ. And He was reconciling the world. He was saying to the world, world, I'm reconciling you. I'm taking you back. Not imputing the world did sins, the world did trespasses, but he's saying not imputing, not you know giving them to you know uh, not counting their transgression, not counting their sins. Hallelujah unto them and had committed unto us. See, he was not counting their sins on that cross. He said, "Oh Father, forgive their sins." Bible is saying when Jesus was on that cross, God was in Christ reconciling the world. God was in Christ exchanging His life to us. God was in Christ on that cross reconciling, joining. Reconciling means joining, exchanging. Joining and exchanging. He was joining the world that was sin, that was, you know, corrupted and full of sin. God was in Christ. Joining, you know, making it holy. Cleansing it, forgiving it. God was in Christ, exchanging this Zoe, this God kind of life to those people who believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. And there it doesn't end. That's the beauty. That, it doesn't end there. It says, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus, okay, he reconciled, but he says, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He wants you and me to act like him. Just the way Jesus acted on the cross. He reconciled, he saved the lost souls. Those people who were sinners, even you know, oh, as Chorki nahi gaya. Those who were sinners, leprous, leprous people, just go socially, they say that if you're leprous, you gotta go inside the room, you have to not come out. If you come out, we're going to stone you. Jesus touched that leprous people. Jesus touched that leprous people and cleansed him. Jesus was not like those Pharisees and scribes. He was not like those cobras. 
Hallelujah. He was not like those cobras. He was not like those Pharisees and scribes. He went to those lost souls. He went to those leprosy people. He went to those, you know, those sinners. He went there and he cleansed them and he, you know, he prayed for them and he, you know, healed them. Are you understanding? God wants us to do this. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. God has given us the ministry. Last time I was saying, we are the ministers of eternal life. We give eternal life to people. We are the ministers of eternal life. Now the Bible is again saying, we are the ministers of reconciliation. We are the ministers of reconciliation. We reconcile the world to Christ. If there is somebody who is blind, who, who doesn't know, who, who doesn't have hope in their life, tonight, we are all family. You who are watching, who are born again, you know, you also pray for them. Those people might be watching right now. You know, you have to pray that may, may, the, may the youths come so that they may see. May the lost youths come so that they may hear the gospel. The Bible says, how will they be saved if God doesn't send a preacher? Tonight, God has sent me if it's not to be. I'm not making my name high. No, it's all Jesus. I'm lifting up His name only. I'm just trying to show you. Look at Jesus. How He's beautiful. How He is the one who reconciles. Not us. We cannot give anything. It's Jesus who does everything. You gotta be praying. Those who are watching, you gotta be praying. There might be some youths who doesn't know, who are blinded by the world. They gotta know, they gotta understand that there is a God who loves them. There is a God who died for them. There is a God who, before the foundation of the world, chose them. There is a God, before the foundation of the world, He put His eyes upon them and He died for them so that He might give Him or her his life, a life that is full of joy, a life that is full of peace, a life that is God kind, that is powerful. Hallelujah. A life through which the sick get, those people who are sick that gets healed. A life through which those who are demon possessed, they, the demons get kicked out when you pray. This is the life God has given us. There, might, there are many people who are being oppressed by the demon. There are many people who are oppressed by sicknesses. Can you be that person? Can God trust you tonight with the ministry of reconciliation? Can God the Father trust you tonight with the ministry of reconciliation? I am speaking to somebody tonight. Can God trust you with the ministry of reconciliation just as He trusted His beloved Son, Jesus Christ? Jesus was the first one who did this ministry of reconciliation. Can God trust you and me tonight with this ministry of reconciliation to exchange the people who are, you know, who are weary, who don't have hope? Can God trust us to take hope to them? Can God trust us with the love so that we can take love to them? Can God trust us with the ministry of reconciliation? God kind of life is, you know, this is the God kind of life. Jesus lived in power. He lived in love. Hallelujah. Can we know, brother, what they are speaking? Are they understanding? Lord Rafa is saying, I, it's not Tubin, it's Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, people are saying, Brother Tubin is a blessed and choosing person from God. We are blessed by your preaching. Keep it Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh dear Jesus, Mantaki Brahazotoko. Reko Bosunto. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Can God trust you with this ministry of reconciliation? And further it says in verse 19 it says, And had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has given us a word. We're not preaching. You know, we're not preaching in vain. We're not preaching for fame. No. Thousand times. We, are, we have a message to tell the whole world. We have a message. Are you understanding? We have a message to tell the whole world. God has given us a word of reconciliation. God has given us the word of God so that we can reach the world. So that we can reach the youths. So that we can reach the lost people. The Bible says the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Hallelujah. If you say, I have the life of God, say this also, that I will be a soul saver. Hallelujah. God wants you. 
God cannot do everything through Brother Tubin. No. God needs you. He needs you in your God needs you to rise up and preach the gospel. God needs you to rise up and show the gospel. Hallelujah. God needs you. God needs that army who shall rise for Jesus. In this in this in this last times, God needs you. Hallelujah. Though the sins, like the world of sin is like drawing the youth, but God, you, you have been chosen by God. You have come, you know it's not by accident God has chosen you. God wants to use you. Are you understanding? We don't, we have a message to preach the world. We're not just doing it for, you know, just like this. No, we have a message. The world needs to know Jesus. The world needs to be reconciled to God. Through us, hallelujah. They need to know about Jesus. Hallelujah. Simon oh. Debermay is saying, yes, my Jesus can trust me. Amen. Hallelujah. And the uh, mayor is also saying that we are the ministers of eternal life. Hallelujah. Ministers of rec reconciliation. Amen. Amen. I will be a soul saver. Amen. Oh, I receive man. it. People are understanding. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, he wants, he wants to use you. There's no doubt in that. There's no doubt in that. Hallelujah. And the verse 20, then he says, <laughs> after all this, then he says in verse 20, which we started from, he says, now then, now then, if you have done all these things, now then, if you have reconciled, now then, if you have exchanged your life with God, now then, you have been trusted with the, with the ministry of reconciliation. Now then, you are the ambassadors of Christ. Now then, you are the representatives of Christ. Hallelujah. Representers for Christ. Now then you're a representer. You're an ambassador of heaven. Now, when you have done these old things, when you have taken the burden, when you have taken up the cross of Jesus Christ, Jesus says, if you want to follow me, take up your cross. Now then, when you have taken up your cross, now then, when you have taken up the word of reconciliation, now when you have taken up the ministry of reconciliation, God is telling you, now then, ye are the ambassadors of Christ. Now then, ye are the representatives of Christ. Now then, ye are the representative of heaven. Hallelujah. He wants to use you. He wants to use you to represent heaven. We talked about we are in heaven. Heaven is in us. Hallelujah. He wants you to be an ambassador for heaven. Say, I am the ambassador of heaven. Say, I am the ambassador for Christ. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what God wants to do through your life? He wants you to be, you know, you to carry your cross, your cross of ministry of reconciliation, ministry of the word, you know, word of reconciliation. As we studied in Isaiah 61, he was saying, God exchanged beauty for ashes. Your assets was exchanged with beauty. Can you do the same with other people? Their assets, can you exchange it with beauty? They are struggling with mourning. They're crying day and night. Can you just go and, you know, give them the oil of joy? Hallelujah. Can you do the ministry of reconciliation? If you do, God is saying that you are an ambassador for Christ. You are a representative of Christ. You have the God kind of life. No, no doubt to that. You have the God kind of life. We have the God, God kind of life. We got to be now the ambassadors of Christ. Representative of Christ. Hallelujah. We got to represent, represent Christ in every area of our life. Hallelujah. Mantaki braha zotoko. Rekondala kiza kotaka. Okay, I'm going to, you know, take you in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 so that you might know. Because I, 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 I believe that this is a youth service and many youths are joined. I know some uncle and aunties are also joined. Uh, we welcome you uncle and aunties also. But this, you know, as we written that this is a youth service, I want to talk to youths now. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, if you go. Here, uh, if you know that Timothy was, you know, a youth like us, Apostle Paul was mentoring him. Just as senior pastor is mentoring me in the same way. Apostle Paul was doing like that. So 1 Timothy 4 2 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Hallelujah. So when God wants you to be an ambassador for Him, when God wants you to be a representative of Christ, He is telling you this verse. He's telling you, let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise thy youth. Are you understanding? Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man, you know, think you as little when you're a youth. Let no man despise the youth, but be thou an example 
Be thou an example. Be an example. This is the word of God. So practical. There might be some people who have joined us for the first time. They might be listening to the word of God for the first time because of your sharing. Thank you so much for sharing also. You have shared to so many people. That's why you're thinking, you know, you are doing a ministry when you're sharing. Hallelujah. Because of your sharing, some, you know, some non-believer or some you know, you, youth who have never listened to the word of God, they might have come here. I want to show you this. The Bible is saying like this, you know, be an example of believers. In what? In word. The way you talk. In your word. And after that, it says in conversation. In word, the way you talk in conversation means the way you manner, the way your manner is. Hallelujah. And after they saying in charity, that is in love. Be an example in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Are you understanding? He says be an example. This is how you represent Christ. In this age of our youths, this is how we represent Christ. This is how we, we be, become an ambassador of Christ. This is how to be an ambassador and representative for Christ and of heaven. Hallelujah. Example, you know, be an example in word, the way we talk, the way we behave, the way we love, the way we give in charity, in spirit that is in anointing, in power also, in faith, the way we have faith. Hallelujah. A childlike faith, in purity, holiness is so important. Without which no man can see God, the Bible says. You gotta have, be holy. Hallelujah. You got to be holy. You got to be peaceful. Without which no man can see God. Hallelujah. This is what, you know, this is what you should be carrying in your character, in your spirit. You know, when you become a, when you become a representative of Christ, when you become an ambassador for Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This verse, uh, I want to just encourage the youths. You know, if you have time, you can read uh, the Timothy's, the book of Timothy. You can read it because it's for the youths. Apostle Paul was telling Timothy how you should be when you're youth. You can read, you know, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. There will be a lot of practical knowledge, practical gnosis, knowledge, that will, you know, help you in your spiritual life. Hallelujah. So, as you're discussing about the God kind of life, you know, uh, we, we have like a little bit, but what we are going to do is now, we're going to shift ourselves to see what God kind of life is now. We've learned that, you know, we have to be an ambassador for Christ. We've learned that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We've learned that God has given us the word of reconciliation, to reconcile the world, to save the lost. God has made us the ambassador for Christ. God has made us the ambassador for heaven. Hallelujah. To represent heaven. Somebody might be like, oh, I'm, you know, uh, I don't feel good tonight. But when they see you, they, sh they should be like, oh, this guy, this girl has some energy in him. I feel, you know, I feel good now. You got to carry heaven in you. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So, <laughs> this is amazing. Let us go in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We have read from 17. We saw 18. We saw 17, we are the new creature. We saw 18, God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. We studied 19, we say we have given, we have been given the word of God as a tool for reconciliation. Use the word of God to encourage people. God has given us that. Hallelujah. So after that, we saw 9, 20, which says we are ambassadors for Christ. Let us read now 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 5 verse 21 says, For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. This is amazing. Bible is saying that God made him, God made Jesus to be sin. Who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. He was born from a virgin as we studied last time in part one, we saw that the Holy Ghost came upon Mary. Mary was you know, filled with the Word of God. Word of God became flesh when the Holy Spirit came. We talked about that. He was born out of the virgin. He was pure. He was without sin. Jesus was God in flesh. He was 100% human, 100% God. Hallelujah. Bible says, God made him to be sin who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. You know, he knew no sin. But God made him to be sin for you and me. Why? He loves us so much. 
God made him to be sin who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God that we might be righteousness of God what is this righteousness? We saw in uh, Isaiah 61, we read uh, before, that God, you know, exchanged, that God reconciled, God exchanged what? The oil of joy for mourning. God exchanged our sorrows for His joy. God gave us His life so that we might become the trees of righteousness. Are you understanding? So that we might become the trees of righteousness, planted by the riverside. Are you understanding? To be fruitful, He wanted us to be Trees of, righteous, trees of righteousness. Now this verse is saying, He made him to be sin. He made Jesus to be sin. My master, your master to be sin. Why? That we might be the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. What is this righteousness? What is the Bible talking about when he says, He made us the righteousness of God? Isaiah, we studied, He made us the trees of righteousness. Now we are studying, Apostle Paul is saying that He Jesus was made sin so that I might become, you might become the righteousness of God. You know, in simple words, uh, if, 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 if I can, you know, in simple words, if, in just in a quick way, I can say you that you can think like about sin. What is sin? What is sin for you? You might think like oh, sin is so dirty, sin is this, sin is like ah, to bondage and all. The righteousness is just opposite of that. Righteousness is opposite of that. If you think that sin is in bondage, righteousness is freedom. If you think that righteousness is dirty, if you think that sin is dirty, righteousness is purity. If you think that you know, sin is like, you know, you know, it's kind of, you know, kind of very dirty and you know, it's, it's, it's death, righteousness is life. Hallelujah. We, we, we studied in Romans 10, 10 also, when you confess with your mouth, you go, go into salvation, but when you believe in your heart, you have righteousness. I told you that righteousness is a state. Righteousness is a state of power. Hallelujah. I wrote here like righteousness is a state of power, it's purity, it's holiness, it's a state of power, holiness and purity. God, you know, when, when Jesus, the Bible says like this, that Jesus when he died on the cross, God raised him up from the dead so that, and he sat on the right hand of God. He sat on the right, on the right hand of God and he became the righteousness of God. Now the Bible is saying that we became the righteousness of God. Because of, you know, because Jesus became sin, who knew no sin, he became sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God, so that we can have a right standing with God. Right standing. Righteousness means right standing. He's a father. But before we were in sin, there was no relationship. But Jesus, he became sin, who knew no sin, so that we might, you know, be, be righteousness of God, so that our relationship with Jesus might be right. So that we might have a right standing with God. Hallelujah. And when we have a right standing with God, you don't know what happens. When you are, you know, in a right standing of God, God sends you favor. God sends you, you know, goodness and mercy starts following you. There is power in righteousness. You know, when you pursue righteousness, when you want to be, you know, when you see that I want to be righteous, that's a quality of God, okay. That's a part of Zoe, that's a part of God kind of life. It's such a big part if you talk about when you talk about Zoe, I cannot miss this part, righteousness. I was talking to God, I was saying like, Lord, uh, I think this righteousness is like too big. But God said, you got talk to, uh, talk to talk to, to, to them about this stuff. Righteousness is very important. When we, talk, uh, when we talk about Zoe, the God kind of life, can I go on? Like, can, what are they saying regarding this? Muska is saying righteousness is the condition of being in a right relationship with the Lord. Okay, amen. Amen. Okay, they're understanding. Amen. They're understanding. Amen. They're understanding. Amen. 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 Okay, so you are understanding. That's so good. So Bible is saying He made us to be the righteousness of God. Because Jesus who knew no sin, He became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. In the right standing with God. When we are in the right standing, you know what power comes? For example, think like this. That uh, you're still living in a, um, what is that called? Kingdom. You're still living in a kingdom. There's still a monarchy. There's a king of India. There's a king of India, the, pri the, the supreme king, the emperor. Emperor king of India. Okay. And, and you are just a, you're just a villager. You're just, you just live in a town. You have no connection with that king. Until unless you, you, if you don't have any connection with the king, you're just a villager. You're just a boy or a girl you know, who lives somewhere. This king rules. This king has, you know, this whole thing belongs to king. 
But if you don't have any relationship with that king, hallelujah, if you don't have any relationship with that king, he won't, you know, are you understanding? I'm just trying to explain you. You know, just think that there is a king, that you are there. And until and unless you have any, if you don't have any relationship with the king, he won't grant you. But once, there is power. That's why he said there's power in righteousness. I say I am righteous. I am the righteousness of God. I confess that. Hallelujah. Why do I confess that? Because I know the power in righteousness. I know that there is power when I say that I am the righteousness of God. I know there is power when I know that I am righteous. I know there is power when I am in the right standing, when I am connected with the king. Just think like this. There is an emperor. You are the villager. And suddenly, by, I don't know what happened, but you became a friend of that king. Oh, Raja ka, oh, emperor ka, ab dos ban gaya. There is a relationship established of you with that king. And suddenly, think about that. Aapko koi janta nahi tha. Suddenly you were living in rags. You were living in that small house. Now, because you have a right relationship, because now you have righteousness, because now you have the rightness, because you are in the right relationship with that king of kings, suddenly things start changing in your life. Suddenly, favor starts coming. Suddenly, sickness goes away. Just as this emperor does. If, if you are connected with the emperor, he will, you know, he will forgive your taxes. You don't have to pay taxes to him. He will give you, you know, salaries, like big, big salaries, so that your family might be wealthy. Hallelujah. That's the same case. When I talk about righteousness, understand it in this way. Jesus is the king of kings. Once you have righteousness, before you, before, before, because of our sin, because of that Satan, there was no righteousness with God. But now, things have changed. Jesus died for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, God made him to be sin. So that we, you and I, might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. You and I might become the righteousness of God. So that you and I might have a right relationship with the King of Kings. So that His favor, His life might impart unto us. So that His favor might impart unto us. So that His love, grace, mercy, whatsoever you talk about, your peace, your freedom, might impart unto you. Are you understanding? Are you understanding? This is so powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, let us, you know, you know whenever you get time, you got to say this out from your spirit. You got to say, I am the righteousness of God. The devil comes next time, you gotta say, I am the righteousness of God. Jesus, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just think like this the devil is coming from there, and you're like, before you were just alone facing the demon. Now, because you have righteousness, hey, now because you have the right standing with God, behind you, there is more powerful, supreme emperor, king of kings, the lord of lords, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus himself is standing right behind you. He's saying, my son, don't worry. Why did it happen? Because now you have righteousness. Why it happened? Because Jesus died for your, for your sins, for my sins on that cross. So that the righteousness might be imputed. Are you understanding how deep this is? Righteousness has been imputed, has been installed in our spirit. When we are in the right relationship with that king, oh, king supplies, king protects, king provides. That's the God kind of, under His anointing, under, the, under, under Jesus Himself, because of righteousness, because I have a right standing with God. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Hallelujah. I can just, you know, keep going, preaching, preaching. I can keep going. But I want you to, you know, just meditate on this. I want you to understand that, you know, God has given you righteousness. When I talk about, when I say you have Zoe, when I say you have the life of God, I am telling you that you have righteousness of God. The rightness with God. You have the righteousness with God. Hallelujah. You have a right standing with God. Now when you're standing like this, it's Jesus also standing with you. We talked about that. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit is upon us. Hallelujah. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
you know that you can operate in that righteousness with that righteousness you can cast out demons when you know this truth when you know that the one who is in you is greater the when you know that Jesus lives inside of you when you know that the holy spirit is inside of you when you know that the holy spirit is upon you when you know that you have a right relationship with the father when you know that anything you ask the father in the name of Jesus he will give you then you will pray for the sick and they will get healed and when you cast out the demon when you will just you know when you say to the demon go out they will be cast out hallelujah there is power in righteousness that's why i confess i say i am the righteousness of god i say i have the righteousness of god i am the righteousness of god because the bible says jesus is the righteousness of god but i know that jesus and me are one so i say i am just like jesus i am just like jesus i am the righteousness of god hallelujah i am the righteousness of god you are the righteousness of god you have the righteousness of god i have the righteousness of god that's why we have authority that's why we have power Hallelujah. Manta ki braha zoko tokoro. Le konda la briga ha zoto koro broda. Le broko zamanta. I want you to meditate on this. I want you to understand what does it mean to be righteous? What does it mean to be righteous with the emperor, to the, with the king? King of kings. Just think of if you have a, if you for example, a uh, prime minister is Narendra Modi, Modi ji, if you are in a relationship with Narendra Modi, he can establish you, right? He can establish you. Wap ko utayga political power say I don't know whatsoever he will try to pull you up that's the same case when you are in a right relationship with God things start changing hallelujah the bible says let us go in hebrews uh, hebrews chapter number 9 hebrews chapter number 9 hebrews chapter number uh, chapter number Okay, blood of Christ. We we are going to see Hebrews chapter number nine. Chapter number nine, verse fourteen. Chapter number nine, verse fourteen says like this. Hallelujah! Praise God. Re grom dala digra azoto koi. Are you excited for the word of God? Because it's just started. I know how you know. It's just started, and you know this is just you know how. There's so much more in the word of God. I want to just you know release so much of words to you tonight. Now God is you know telling me let us go let us not waste time and let us go inside this. Hebrews 9:14 says, "How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God?" There is power in the blood of Jesus. Why I'm talking about the blood of Christ because it is important to know because it is a gateway to the zoe to god kind of life the bible says like this that how much more shall the blood of christ blood of jesus who was shed on that cross shall cleanse your conscience do you know that there is a life you can live with with you know with a, with a clear conscience there is no conscience of condemnation there's no conscience of guilty there's a conscience of love actually there you know the bible says like this Before in the Old Testament they used to you know shed blood of lambs and goats bulls hallelujah so as to you know purge the sins so as to cleanse the sins wa israel ka admi lukta unko kuch paap karne se the priest high priest will go and in the temple he would used to like slain he used to cut the the lamb or goat and bulls so that the blood can be spilled so that their sins might be forgi- uh, forgiven so the bible is saying like this um, in hebrews 9:13 it says for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an hyper sprinkling sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh if if the blood of bulls and goats used to clean them for one year if the if the blood of these old things used to you know cleanse them in their outward way outward way when do you used to do some religious stuff if the shedding of blood used to cleanse them this thing the blood of jesus christ that was shed on the cross can cleanse us from the spirit soul and body it can cleanse us completely hallelujah the blood of christ how much more the bible is saying like this how much more hebrews 9:14 how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit that is through the holy spirit offered himself without spot without sin without blame as we studied before he was a guy he, jesus knew no sin he sacrificed himself for us so that he might cleanse us are you seeing how much jesus loves us he cleanses our conscience even our conscience our inner being 
Sometimes it happens like outside we are like, okay, we love you, we, we so love. But from the inside, you know, we cannot, you know, love them. Pure. We cannot love them truly. In our conscience, we have some, uh, we have some bitterness or some kind of, you know, we, 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 we cannot love them from the inside, just from outside. But we, we show. And other person also doesn't understand. They think, oh, they love me. The Bible is saying that there is only one remedy for that. There is only one remedy to cleanse your conscience. And yes, it is possible. There is one remedy to cleanse your conscience, to cleanse your inner man, and that is the blood of Christ. That is the blood of Jesus Christ. He can cleanse you from the inside. And once He's cleansed you, the Bible says like, in the end, He says, purge your conscience from dead works. From dead works to serve the living God. You, you, were, you, know, you were stuck on that. You were stuck on, you were stuck on some bad stuff. You are stuck on some addictions. But the blood of Jesus cleanses you. If somebody's watching me tonight, I'm speaking to you. If you're watching and you're stuck in some addiction or something, God is telling you, by the blood, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I'm cleansing you. From the inside, I'm cleansing you. Hallelujah. You're free in Jesus' name. He's cleansing you by the power of the blood of Jesus. He's saying, I purge your conscience from dead works, from all the dead works, so that you might serve the living God. How beautiful is that? So that you might serve the living God. He wants us to serve the living God. Those who are watching, this is for those who are watching for the very first time, who haven't, you know, uh, who haven't joined us, who haven't known about the youth breakthrough. We're telling you that God loves you. And God, Jesus Christ, died for you. He died for you. And through His blood, He cleansed your conscience. You can live a guilt-free life. You can live a f life which is free from hatred, from bitterness. You can live a life of love. You can live a life of peace. Hallelujah. I declare and decree, as a prophet, I declare and decree that you will live a life of peace. You will live a life of love. I declare that right now. Receive that in Jesus' name. Receive that in Jesus' name. Yes, there is somebody, who, yes, there is somebody who is saying that I receive and God is telling me. Yes, yes, yes. You're saying that I receive. God is telling me that tonight onwards, you will receive a supernatural peace. Receive a supernatural love for others. Hallelujah. Receive that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God loves us so much. He cleansed us, our conscience too. So when we are talking about the God kind of life, when we are saying Zoe, we're not just saying from ourselves. I'm not just saying from my lips. I'm saying it from my heart. I just know that I, God, yeah, 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 yeah. God has given me a life that is eternal. God has given me eternal life. I know. That's why I'm speaking. I know. We're not, I'm not just saying. My conscience, I have that conscience that knows that I am the righteousness of God. I have that conscience that knows that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I have a conscience that knows that I am an ambassador, a representative of Christ. Hallelujah. And tonight, God wants you to have that conscience. As you go out from this, I want you to confess. Hallelujah. I want you to start confessing that I am the righteousness of Christ. I want you to confess that I am the righteousness of Christ. I want you to say that, that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you say those, you will see that the stuff starts changing. Your life will start changing. Hallelujah. You know, you will see that you're approaching the God kind of life. Little by little, you're encroaching, you're possessing. You're saying, oh, devil is saying that yeah, you are weak. You're saying, no, I am strong. You're confessing that little by little, little by little, you're going in. You're going in and approaching the God kind of life. You're trying, you know, you're, you, and, and there comes a moment when you say, I have arrived. When you know that, yes, I got it. You sound like, I got it, hallelujah. You say, I have arrived, hallelujah. You say, I have the God kind of life. You start confessing that I have the God kind of life. You know, it happens when you start confessing, when you start with, oh, I am the righteousness of God. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you start doing like that, Suddenly starts, things started changing. And you see, you see, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God. Oh, God is in favor with me. God is with me. Who can be against me? Oh, who can separate me from the love of Christ? I am powerful. When you start saying this, suddenly your mouth will say, Oh, I have the God kind of life. You'll start saying, I have the God kind of life. You'll start saying, I have joy. I have peace. I have the God kind of life. Hallelujah. Now before... Before we leave from this, I want you to you know, tell you one thing. 
What I want you to what I want you to do is that you know we come here. We I preach the God. I preach here from here from the pulpit to you. I cannot show you the whole Bible. I cannot show you the Word of God, the powerful revelations in the Word of God. At least I can do this. I, I'll show you one one verse. Okay, I just God's you know made me remember one verse. I want to show you this, and I want you to be hungry for that because I, I want you to be hungry for that because God is telling me to show you this. Philippians three twenty will go. We'll read in another translation. We'll read in NKJV if you if you have NKJV, brother. Philippians, uh, Philippians three twenty. I would just I, I want to show you this, and you know it's very exciting. Hallelujah! It's very exciting. Manta kita kahzoto. Turn with me to Philippians three. Philippians three twenty. Philippians three twenty. And those who are writing you. No, you gotta. You should be writing. Actually, you should be making some notes. You gotta. At least you gotta keep up this. You know, word of God, because you gotta need them. Hallelujah. You gotta need them before later on purposes. You gotta meditate on them. And when the devil comes, use this word of God. Use this word of God against them. Hallelujah. Use this word of God against those demons, against those negative thoughts. Use this word of God as the sword of the spirit. Okay. So write all these verses that I'm telling you. Philippians chapter number three, verse twenty. I guess. Three twenty. Yes, yes, that one. Yes, we're going to read in NKJV because uh, in uh, KJV it's written conversation. But when you read the Greek terminology, it's different. But I want to be more clear, so we'll read in NKJV if we have NKJV. Then, huh? Okay, we're going to see from NKJV. The NKJV one says, uh, "Okay, let me just search NKJV here." Manta ribaha zata ki ribaha zonta ki ribaha sata. Lego boho zala manta ki brada soto ko. Okay, so in KJV says that uh, Philippians three verse twenty it says for our citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah! It says for our citizenship is heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Are you seeing this? Hi. Are you seeing this? Our citizenship is in heaven. We are Indians, right? We are Indians. We are Bharat Desh mein hai. Our citizenship. People ask like, what is your citizenship? We say, we are Indians. Our citizenship is from India. And if you ask somebody from US, you will ask them, what is your citizenship? They will say, I am a citizen of America. Hallelujah. And when you you know when you go to you know vote. They will ask. They will have an, you know. Um, they will see your citizenship to you know when you are going for election vote. But the beautiful things in America is this: that they have dual citizenship. Do you know that? They have dual citizenship. Uh, for example, they have a citizenship of the entire country, America, USA, and another citizenship is that you know the whole you know the big America. They have one citizenship, the whole, whole continent. Okay, they have a big you know. Um, you can go and search. You know they have dual citizenship. The whole of America has one citizenship. You will ask them, you know, uh, what is your citizenship? They will say that I belong from America, but they have a dual citizenship. When you ask them further, they will say that, oh, I belong from, you know, Carolina. I'm from California. I'm from this this district. They have a, they have a dual citizenship. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So, for example, in India case, it will be like uh, uh, we have a citizen, we have a general citizenship that is of India, but we have another citizenship that is. Maybe of state. Maybe I'll say like I have a dual citizenship. One is from India and another one is from Arunachal. And you will say like, oh, I I have a dual citizenship. I am I have a citizenship of India and also of Assam, also of you know Tripura, also of Manipur, also of Agat. Like that, you will be saying like that. That is dual citizenship. America has that. So Bible is saying that for our citizenship, Paul is saying for our citizenship is in heaven. Hamruka citizenship. We say that I am an Indian citizen. Yes, we are. But also, you gotta say that I am a heavenly citizen. Hallelujah. You gotta say that I have a citizenship. I have a citizenship of heaven. Are you seeing this verse? I have a citizenship from heaven. That means I belong to heaven. We say that I am in heaven. Heaven is in me. This verse is showing that we are in heaven. Hallelujah! You you were saying, like, brother Tubin, what are you saying? You're saying that okay, we are in heaven and we are in earth also. Yes, we are, we, there is a kind of parallel world if you think. We are both in heaven right now. At the same time, we are in heaven. We have a citizenship of heaven at the same time of this place. Hallelujah! And you will say, oh, brother Tubin, don't tell me that. Okay, you're saying that. Okay, you are here, but the Bible is saying for our citizenship is is in heaven. That means that we should be in heaven right now. He's saying that our citizenship is is in heaven. You'll be saying, brother, we should be in heaven then. Our citizenship, if the, our citizenship is in heaven. 
let me tell you, you know, this we are in heaven already. Who do, those people who are born again, those people who have the God kind of life, we live in heaven. You'll be saying like, I brought to, uh, I don't, I'm not understanding. You know, it's not satisfying. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, yeah, that there is a heaven right there. We'll be going there as we talked about that Jesus is coming very soon. That's why we have a gospel to preach to the world. That's why we're not stopping. That's why there is an urgency to preach the gospel. That's why I'm calling you also to preach the gospel. That's why I'm telling you to also stand up for Jesus because Jesus is coming very soon. We have a very limited time. So this verse is saying that we have a citizenship of heaven. We live in heaven. We, have a, we are the citizen of heaven. That means as, even if we are here in earth, we are in heaven. You say, brother, to me, no, I'm not understanding. Is there like, what is that? What are you trying to say? Parallel world. There is heaven. Here also heaven. Let me show you this. Let me tell you one thing. You think that only there is one heaven, but you're wrong. You know, maybe your uh, maybe like you know your preachers, your your teachers, or what the trend is going. The cobras are teaching you like that. You have one heaven, but the Bible says. Let me let us go in Second Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. We'll just go there and come back. Okay, I, I just want to show you something there. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two says, Apostle Paul is saying, uh, okay, Apostle Paul is saying, I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago, whether in the body. I do not know. Or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such an one was caught up to the third heaven. Are you seeing this? I know you never saw this in, the, in your Bible reading. Here the Bible is saying there's, he was caught up in the third heaven. Are you seeing third heaven? Heaven number three. So you say, Brother, there is a heaven. Number one heaven, number two heaven, number three heaven. Yes, there is. There are a lot of spiritual things, you know, we haven't taught you all those stuff. And, you know, this is a story, another day story, we won't go there. But just, I want you to, you know, have a hunger for the Word of God. I want you to know that the Word of God contains treasure. Word of God, Word of God is so deep, so powerful. Hallelujah, I want you to go. You know, this is what I want to convey to you. If you're going there, you know, you read the Word of God on your own. You read, you read the Word of God. I'm telling you, I'm jitna bata rahe na, usse zada aapko milega. The word that I'm speaking more than this, the revelations will flow to you because of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Ah, the Bible says, you know, uh, let me just finish with this. Uh, the Bible says in uh, 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 in 1 Peter 1.18, brother, we'll go in 1 Peter 1.18. 1 Peter 1.18 Oh, glory Jesus. First Peter 1 18 says, For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. Okay, okay, so sorry. This is not 18. Uh, we'll just see which verse it is. Uh, brother, can you tell me what people are saying? Are they understanding? Are they enjoying the, are they enjoying the word of God? You're out of face. Okay, First Peter 1 8. Sorry, was not 18, it's 1 8. First Peter 1 8. First Peter 1 8 says like this Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying that there is a joy unspeakable, there is a state that is full of glory. Hallelujah. This is what will happen when you go to the when you go in the word of God, when you start reading. You'll be reading like this, you'll be like, oh okay, 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 okay. Suddenly the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Suddenly he will open up the word of God to you. And suddenly you'll receive the revelation in your spirit. And you'll be like, oh hallelujah, praise God. This is the Bible saying, you know him. Oh, blah, 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 blah. The Bible is saying there is something called as joy unspeakable. There is a joy, and that is full of glory. And that happens when you go to the Word of God. Please go to the Word of God. Please go open the reopen the Word of God and read. And I believe, I am telling you, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal you some secrets like, like you have never seen before. Now you are born again. Oh, glory to Jesus that we are born again. Thank you, Lord, that we are born again. And now when you will go there, you will start seeing the, ver the verses. The verses will come up to you. Hallelujah. You will start seeing the revelations of God. I want you to go and read the word of God. I, I just told you that there are three heavens. Find out what is the first heaven, second heaven, kya hota hai, third heaven. Kya hota hai. Just go and find out. Hallelujah. You know, let me just tell you this. That we are living in heaven. We are living in first heaven. You know, we carry heaven. We live in heaven. 
that's why I'm preaching boldly about Zoe, the God kind of life. This verse is saying that there is something called as joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Unspeakable joy. Full of glory. Full of glory. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about we've been going from glory to glory, but this verse is saying we are full of glory. La bo shanta. Full of glory, jo- ah, joy unspeakable, and full of glory. Read the word of God. Revelations will come to you. When the revelations are the revelations have come. Spirit may aiga. Hallelujah. You will receive this thing. Joy unspeakable. Go and read. Hallelujah. Go and read. You know, when you read, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Your things will change, your life will change. I'm telling you, go for the word, go for the word, go for the word. Go to the word, read the word like anything. Your life will change. God will, you know, give you the God kind of life. He will reconcile you to himself. He will exchange your dead life with his God life. Hallelujah. He will exchange your human nature with his divine nature. Hallelujah. He will make you, make you his partner. He will make you his partaker. Hallelujah. He will impart some revelations into your spirit. But it will not happen until and as you go to the Word. Hallelujah. Until and as you go to the Word, it will not happen. Jesus doesn't just want us to give us, you know, uh, He doesn't just want us to give us healing or deliverances. He wants us to give the Word of God in our spirit. That is what God wants us to do. When you go for the Word, when you go for the Word, you will come back with a testimony. Hallelujah. You will come back with a testimony. Word when you go and read the word I'm telling you you go and read the word you'll find revelations after revelation you'll be loving Jesus we read that Jesus was the word the word became flesh the word became flesh and dwelt among us ah yeah yeah it was the word this word the Bible says this word that God breathed God breathed when you read the word you will receive anointing you'll receive the spirit of God more and more in your life You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Go for the word. You know, open the word, open the word. You will receive joy unspeakable. You'll be full of glory. Nothing can stop you. We'll live a victorious life. Hallelujah. Manta ki bahazotuku. Liga bahara do shala mande kere digaha. Lekonda la priga zota ki la manda ki rahazotu. You can close your eyes right now. Le basun da kira bahazata kere. Loga basika ta kele manda ki brado shata. Yes. Father. Tonight we listened about that you want us to be your ambassador. You want us to be, you want us to be your representative, Lord Jesus. Tonight you told us that there is a ministry of reconciliation. Tonight you told us that you exchanged our life with the God kind of life. Father, speak to them, Lord Jesus. Speak to them so that they might go to the Word, Lord. So that they might go to you, Jesus. It's only you. The word says, you, you were the word at the beginning. The, there is a song like this. Uh, it says like this, you were the word at the beginning. He is the word. What a beautiful name it is if you go and listen. He is the word. Go for the word. When you go for the word, God will touch you in a personal way. God is going to give you revelations after revelations. What I'm speaking to you tonight, this is nothing. There's nothing compared to what God can give you directly in your spirit. God is in soul, so, you know, God loves you so much. Go to the Word. He will show you how much He loves you and what He has done for you. Don't you want to know what He has made you? Don't you want to know that what He did for you in your life? Don't you want to know that when you were born again, what happened in your life? Don't you want to know that when you accepted Jesus, what happened in your life? Just as they kept church on a Sunday, said, No! Thousand times, no. God wants you to go for His word. He will show you what He did for you. He will show you a life that is beyond comprehension. Hallelujah. He will show you a life that is beyond comprehension. God has made us to be His partaker. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now, Father, that they might receive the revelations that what we have preached tonight, Jesus. May they know that they have a Zoe, the God kind of life, Father. Lord, may they be a minister of reconciliation, Lord Jesus. May you provide them the word of reconciliation. May you use them, Lord Jesus, to be light and life and salt of the world, Lord. Oh, dear Jesus, we bless your name, Jesus, tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. But I believe that you have spoken to them tonight, Jesus. If there is anybody who, is, who needs healings, you can raise up your hands. God is going to touch you right now. God is going to touch you right now. He's going to heal you. He's going to heal you right now. Touch in Jesus' name. Touch in Jesus' name. As God is touching you, God is touching you, my brother. From the, from the crown of your head to the tip of your toe, God is touching you right now. God is touching you. God is healing you. God is healing you. God is healing you. Raboshya Karamante. And those who are watching in Facebook, you keep on praying. Keep on praying. You can pray. There might be somebody who might be watching for the very first time who have never heard the gospel. You pray for them. May God open their eyes so that they might see the truth. And may the truth set them free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, tonight you told us that we are the righteousness of God. Father, may they confess that they are the righteousness of God. May they confess again and again that they are the righteousness of God. May they know the truth, the reality that they are the righteousness of God, that they have the life of God in them, Lord. Father, bless them in your name, Jesus. Thank you for this blessed service, Lord Jesus. Lord, I seal them, Lord with thy Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit. I seal them, I seal this revelation with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Upon this Spirit, may they know that they are the righteousness of God. And Lord, when they, when, when the devil comes next time, may they confess that they are the righteousness of God. And may that, oh hallelujah, may you, you know, may, may the God, may my God supply you with strength and power in the days to come. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, for this blessed night. We surrender everybody who's watching right now. In your mighty name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for joining all the, all the youths who have joined. And you know, I hope you're blessed. I hope you're blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah. But can we just know what they're saying, if, if, if it's possible? If they've understood or something like that, can they just talk? Can they, can they give us some... You know, feedback or something. Can you tell me, like, did you understand? Because if I come here and I preach and you don't understand, what's the use? Hallelujah. Uh, did you understand? Or like, you can just write in your comments that, yes, I've understood. Hallelujah. Brother? Okay, okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Man, taki brahazodo. Till they are writing, what we are going to do is that we are going to see another verse. We're going, I'm going to leave you with this verse. Because G Jesus wants this to be in your spirit. Mark 16, 15 says, you can mark in your you know, notebook or something which you are writing. You can go and check it out later on. Mark 16, 15 says, and Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus is saying, go. Go to the ends of the world. Preach the gospel there. Go everywhere. Go everywhere. Nations to nations. Go everywhere. Hallelujah. I, you know, I say like this. I say that the nations are open unto me. I say, you know, you see the nation. The nations are open unto me. The nations are open for the gospel of Jesus. I say, this nation, Asia, this Asia is open for the gospel of Jesus. I say, Europe is open for the gospel of Jesus. I say, Africa is open for the gospel of Jesus. I say that Jesus will take me there. I say that this all nations are open for me. Can you say that like this tonight? I know there are many people who want to preach the gospel. Can you say like this? Oh, hallelujah. The nations are open for me. God will use you. God will use you to, in those nations. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, <laughs> it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every living thing that is alive. You know, you go and preach every soul that is a Go and preach. They need to hear this message. We carry a message. We're not, we carry a message of hope. We carry a message of eternal life. Am I talking to somebody? We carry a message of eternal life. We carry eternal life. We carry the living waters. We carry the light of the world. We carry the salt of the world. We are the light of the world. We have a message for the world. That's why Jesus says, go out to the world and preach the gospel. This is God kind of life. This is Zoe. This is Zoe. You got to go out and preach the gospel. Maybe it's your neighbor first of all. Maybe it's your some family members. Dire dire bata usko. Esa ne kacha nahi You know you gotta be, no. Dire dire bata. Dire dire bata. You gotta show them the practicality. I told you. First Timothy chapter four twelve. It says, "Be thou an example." Ek example banu Isn't that so practical? 
बाइबल से बी एन एग्जाम्पल इन फेथ इन लव इन चैरिटी अच्छा काम में एक एग्जाम्पल बनो The world is telling them. The world, dunya ka admi bol raha acha bano aur admi bol raha hai iska wisdom itna. You have the wisdom of God. I have the wisdom of God. We have the wisdom of God. We gotta show them the Bible. You see, the wisdom is here. The wisdom is in this in this Bible. The wisdom is here, full of wisdom, full of glory. Ah, didn't we read right now? Full of glory, full of wisdom. The Bible is full of wisdom and full of glory. Go and show them. Go and show them the wisdom. Go and show them the power. Go and preach to the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, brother. It's not working. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe you have understood because of some network problem. I cannot see your comments, but I know that you have written that I have understood. I have understood. I can see. You know, I can see in my spirit that you have understood. And I see many people. You know. Hallelujah. They, they, they. Now they're like very excited to go into the Word of God. I see many people whose faith has been stirred up today. Hallelujah. I see many, you know, many people who thought that they were backslidden, but tonight, because of your friend, your friend brought you, right? I can see you in my spirit. The, your friend brought you, and tonight you were saying that, oh Lord, I'm both backslidden. But God is saying that, my daughter, my son, you know, I love you, and he's called, and he has called you back tonight. He has reconciled you. Reconcile का मतलब exchange trip नहीं है, इसका मतलब unify भी है. Join कराना. He has joined you tonight. He has joined you again. Hallelujah. Jesus has joined you to you. आपको और Jesus को join कर दिया है आज. Tonight I believe, I believe that you have received in your spirit the God kind of life. We talked about that. We talked about power in the first part. We talked about power here too. But soul winning also we talked about tonight. It was so glorious. Oh, we bless our King Jesus for this glorious. You know, glorious word of God. It is only Jesus who, who separated the word of God so that we can listen. Hallelujah! Go and you know, go and preach the gospel to the ends of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We surrender this service once again, Father, onto Your hands. May those people use the word of God. The next time the devil comes, may they use the word of God as the as the sword of the Spirit. May they go to the word of God. May they receive joy unspeakable, Father, in the name of. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, thank you so much for joining once again. This is Brother Tubin from Youth Breakthrough Warriors signing off. Bye-bye. We we'll see you next time.